Let's get to our next story, and that's in a Texas, uh, marking down some assets. So th this goes back to last week when there's a big outflow of one of its funds. Can you walk us through kind of the timeline for what happened and where we are right now? Sure. So in the middle of last, in the middle of last week, we had the FT come out with a story about Natixis and a number of funds and the relationship to Lars Windhorse mm -hmm. and a lot of illiquid assets that were kind of baked into his own holdings, including La Perla, the intimates maker, which was losing money. And so after that, when investors started to realize this, and there was a lot of outflows and assets dropping by more than $1 billion. After that now, we have an Texas coming out and saying, well, we're going to mark down the value of these assets early on, which is quite a different tack than we've seen from other fan fund managers, which are, for example, Neil Woodford has frozen redemptions completely. Hmm. So we're seeing the Texas shares now rise just a little bit, so react quite positively well, to Well, that's my question, exactly, because yes. they were pretty aggressive in the markdown, basically saying, we're going to take it way down so that there's only upside, so you know how bad it is. And the shares are responding, you say. So they are responding so far, and it is interesting that they are rising because it shows that investors are um, applauding the fund managers who kind of nip the problem away immediately, rather than um, uh, Woodford, for example, who has said, don't worry about it. The H2O fund CEO himself has tried to be patient with investors and said, you know, we know what's in here, don't worry about it so much, but obviously Natixis is taking a different view.